Hey guys, so I'm at the government house. So the governor, Mr. Chris Dawson, lives here. He's famous for his Cleo case. Uh, he was the ex -commission, police commissioner. Um, and now he gets to live here. So this is um, right in the middle of the city, as you can see in the background. It's on St. George's Terrace, so it's a popular spot. And it's right behind the car park where Riverside Drive is as well. So it's a hidden lake and it's a beautiful lake. It's so pristine. Um, this is what I want every other urban lake to look like because the water quality is perfect. There's no feral fish in there. Uh, there's so many native plants in there around the edges and also in the water as well in your core areas. And there's so much bird life, uh, frog life and insect life. So we'll dive into results and I'll show you what we get. All right, so all we're doing here is um, taking out a bike net. Um, so it's got wings that run into the sedges. So hopefully the fish and insects and the tadpoles might bounce onto this um, little wing and then uh, follow the trap. Let's see what we get. little nice pristine little lake get the sampling container and fill it with some of the water the natural water and bring it in and then we have a net with a fine mesh and we try and drag we sample the whole water column so what we do is try and get it out as deep as possible and then felt do it to a standard sort of method and then we drag it along the bottom you keep moving and try and drag it for about five meters or so and then quickly pull it out so you don't lose the invertebrates all right paul what do you have here mate uh, we've got mayfly uh, with the three circe out the back we've got nodonectids swimming around so it's full of life ah here we go there's a zygoptera a damselfly larvae that sort of yeah nice. it's great the water quality is really good there's So this is a diatessid beetle we caught, beautiful specimen, and this is an indicator of pretty good uh, water quality. They are predators, so they'll go for your baby insects and plankton and zooplanktons. Um, so yeah, that's great to get. The thing we do is a stalking session to record any invertebrates we get in here, um, any fish or frogs or even plant species we see.
Hey guys, yeah, so today we're using a dissolved oxygen meter and we're going around multiple spots on this water system, checking the different habitats and uh, what the dissolved oxygen levels are in the different areas. So on this one particularly, we're seeing really good oxygen levels coming from the plantation within uh, the pond itself. So we're sitting at about 10.2 milligrams per litre. What we're needing to aim for is generally the four to six milligrams per litre. So this system's looking really, really healthy. Plants, what we've got is uh, Chinoplectus uh, tabamontani. Uh, there's Bacopa monorea there. This is a native. Uh, this is uh, Juncus uh, pallidus, by the looks of it. Um, so if you don't know, how do I do it? Just take it to your herbarium, the, the flower head, and then see if you can get it ID'd in your, for your personal dam. So on the background, we've got lots of um, paperbark. That's Melaleuca quinquinervia. That's actually an Eastern State species. And we've got Cacharina over there, Allo Cacharina. That's a native plant. All its roots and stuff will absorb the nutrients in the water, which is great. We've also got Bormia articulata over here. So that's a native. Um, and the way you ID these guys is they've got these little nodes here. You might be able to see that on the sun reflection on there. Um, and if you want, you can take you know, a head like that into your herbarium and then get it ID'd and take a photo of the whole plant as well. Oh, that's bulrush, Typha domingensis. That's actually native. Uh, it's got the smaller flower head on it, so that's definitely a native uh, plant. Ah, papyrus. So that's from South Africa, that plant. Papyrus. So we've got, looks like hydrilla. So if you turn, the way you ID it is, this is most like a verticulata, but I'll get that confirmed. Um, you can see a serrated leaf on the underside um, and the midrib through there. They're also in bells of about five to, you know, seven. Um, so each node, there's, there's a whirl of leaves. So that's hydrilla. That's great to have, and that's what you don't get in most urban lakes, because you've got lots of feral fish that basically eat these plants. So uh, once that's gone, the nutrient absorption capacity of the lake reduces, and then you get a higher incidence of algal blooms.